by now you've seen the headlines. Yesterday, on the set of a Western filming in New Mexico, the actor Alec Baldwin fired a gun that was supposed to be a prop in a scene. The resulting shot killed the film's cinematographer. 42-year-old woman named Helena Hutchins. She was considered to be a rising star in her field. Again, she was the cinematographer. The film's director was also injured in this incident. He has since been released from the hospital. But when it comes to figuring out how this could have happened, the questions that come to the fore are sort of both simple and mystifying, right? How does a prop gun result in a real shooting? In some cases, a prop gun is, is literally something that's not a gun at all. It has no working parts. It's something just made out of rubber or plastic that's just designed to have a gun shape. But if you're watching a movie or a TV show and you see somebody actually fire a weapon, you hear the bang, you see the flash, chances are that is either special effects or that could be a real gun firing a blank bullet. Now, what's a blank bullet? Uh, this is a diagram that USA Today posted today, which I think is useful. Um, for an actual piece of ammunition, one that's designed to, you know, shoot someone, um, there's several parts. There's the casing, the primer, the powder, gunpowder, uh, and the bullet, which is at the tip of the projectile. That's the thing that's supposed to be able to kill you, right? The primer and the powder are the things that make the, gullet, uh, the, the bullet propel out of the gun. That's the stuff that goes bang and lets off the flash. But it's the bullet that is the actual projectile that's fired out the, out the end of the barrel. Now, if a gun is loaded with a blank, that just means it has all those other component pieces that a real piece of ammunition has, minus the bullet itself, minus the projectile that's designed to actually kill you. Um, just because they're blanks, though, doesn't mean they're not dangerous. I mean... Go back to that diagram showing the blank for a second. Can we put that back up? You see where it says wad sealed with plastic or paper released like a projectile. There isn't a chunk of metal on the end, a bullet, but you do still need to stick something in there to seal in the gunpowder. And typically blanks use paper or plastic wadding. That obviously has, you know, poses less danger than a bullet. But if fired at close enough range, even a blank can seriously injure or even kill someone. Right, it's technically missing the bullet, but even a blank can be dangerous. Even a blank can be deadly. That's happened on movie sets before. These things are so dangerous that a lot of productions don't even use them at all anymore. You know the show, the, the show Mayor of Easttown? That was on HBO earlier this year. It was so good. Um, Kate Winslet plays the police detective. This is not a spoiler, but a lot of guns are fired on that show. Um, Kate Winslet's a cop. And on Mayor of Easttown, for that whole show, they decided that every firing of every gun would all be CGI. It was all special effects. They didn't use prop guns loaded with blanks. They, you know, maybe lost the authentic recoil and the live muzzle flash that they would have gotten from using blanks, but they decided it wasn't worth the risk. They added, all the, they added in all of those effects after the fact. And a lot of productions do that now. But a lot of movie and TV sets still do use real guns. The prop master who handles all props for all purposes on the set, if there are guns being used, that person can sometimes be assisted by a specialist, an armorer, somebody who specializes in, in weaponry for film and TV sets. Now, as you can imagine, the entertainment industry has really strict rules for using firearms on set. Um, this is some of the, from the Industry-Wide Labor Management Safety Commission. These are some of the safety bulletins they've put out about guns on set. Look at what this one says right, right at the top in all capital letters. Blanks can kill. Treat all firearms as though they are loaded. And then it's just pages and pages of rules trying to head off any tragic accidents like the one that we saw yesterday in New Mexico. Number one, refrain from pointing a firearm at anyone, including yourself. It is abs if it is absolutely necessary to do so on camera, consult the prop master. Number two, never place your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Keep your finger alongside the firearm and off the trigger. Number three, know where and what your intended target is. This goes on and on and on. And to state the, the very obvious, clearly something broke down on this film set yesterday in New Mexico when a crew member was killed and another seriously injured when an actor discharged a prop gun. And we don't know where the breakdown of safety protocols occurred. But how did it... How could it have happened? Still lots of unanswered questions here, but joining us now is Steve Wolf. He is a weapons safety expert for films. He was involved in the investigation of the accidental shooting death of Brandon Lee uh, during a movie shoot back in 1993. Mr. Wolf, it's a real pleasure to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Rachel, it's such a pleasure to be with you. And I, I almost feel like you don't need me here. You've really got this. 
Well, let me ask you if I've explained any of this wrong. When I was talking about blanks and the differences no, between blanks and bullets, that was all the way it's supposed to be explained? You, you, you nailed it. Uh, you, you could have done you know, 10 times the job that was done on the Baldwin set. Oh, well, let me ask so you about this. this. I mean, I'm very, of, I'm very you know, true. Here, oh, go ahead. So please. this is the same thing. This, is, this would be a blank round. Just a casing and room for some gunpowder. And this is live ammo, the thing that you use to, to shoot at things. So hard to just, you know, hard to get these wrong, which is which. Um, one issue, though, is in referring to this weapon as a prop weapon. A, a prop is anything that an actor touches. An actor touches their cell phone, you know, yeah, this is a prop. Well, if I touch this gun, it's a prop. That doesn't make it a prop gun, though. It's, it's a gun that's being used as a prop. A prop gun has been mechanically modified so that you cannot introduce live ammo to it. Live ammo simply, sorry about that, live ammo simply won't go in to a prop gun. Only blanks will go in. So it's not that they were killed with a, that, that, you know, he was killed with a prop gun. He was killed with a real gun. And presumably now what we're hearing is, you know, with actual live ammo. Also, when we say going live on set, as you said, um, going live doesn't mean that we're using live ammo. It means that we're about to do something noisy, that we're really doing the real thing. You know, we're going to, we're going live. We're going to blow up the car. We're going live. We're loading the gun with the blanks. You know, it doesn't mean that we're putting real ammunition with bullets into guns that are capable of firing them and then, you know, handling them on set. Steve, because of all of the safety protocols that are used, including, as you just described, like making sure that you're using a realistic looking weapon that is operable, but it can't be loaded with live ammunition, the kind of safety rules that I just showed that are standard in terms of um, what people are, how people are trained to work around these kinds of um, firearms on set, because of what we know about the sort of industry standards around safety briefings for everybody involved in a shoot that's got a, that's got a firearm involved in it in any way, it just seems very surprising, given the current state of how these things are handled in the industry, that this could happen. It seems like there's so many safeguards, this should be impossible. Yes. It's, it's to the point where you, you can't hurt somebody by breaking a rule. You can hurt someone when you break multiple rules. So when you use an unmodified firearm that can accept live ammo, when you put that live ammo in it, when you point the gun at a person, You've now broken three rules that mm -hmm. lead you down the, the road towards accidental homicides. Uh, any one of these things, you know, if, if, let's say you brought a live gun and put real ammo in it, but when you pointed it, you observed the rule that we don't point guns at things we don't want to see holes in, there wouldn't have been a fatality. You know, a bullet would go whizzing past everyone's head. Everyone's like, oh my God, this is an unsafe set and I'm leaving. But no one would have been killed. So you have to break a, a bunch of rules. Also, the, the talk about the gun misfiring, when a gun misfires, it doesn't go off. So the gun didn't misfire in the previous days. It was accidentally discharged. And I'm not sure how it's an accident. You know, having had guns around my whole life, I've never seen a gun go off by itself. Guns go off when you, I'm going to check that it's clear. Guns go off when you press the trigger. This is an intentional act. And so we shouldn't confuse intentional acts from accidents. The gun didn't accidentally go off. The gun was put in the hands of a person. The person did not check if there was anything in it. And then they pressed the trigger twice. That's why the gun went off. Hmm. So it was, it was a matter of unsafe handling and unsafe supervision.